Hi, welcome to my channel. Hello, welcome uh, wherever you are and whatever country you're from. It's time for Q&A. So, I started this channel back in January, well, really the 31st of December 2020, but this channel was really started in 2021, first video and all that. Um, and some people may know me from my previous channel, which still exists and is still thriving in its study tube um, and revision and school themes. This one is now fully Eurovision, fully music and fully here. Um, we're, we're on this channel now and this channel is thriving like wow. Um, but today I want to do a q and I want to let you guys get to know me more, more than just my Eurovision, I suppose, reactions because that is very in the moment very you know right now um and there's more to me than obviously right now in front of the cameras so i asked in a community post um to ask me questions that i'll answer in this video and you guys responded and i have quite a few questions um from a lot of different people that i will be answering throughout this video and so dramatic zoom <laughs> And so the first question is going to be from Francesco M who says, how did you get into Eurovision? Well, my story is actually quite different from a lot of other people. So I, well, mm, I, I don't know how similar or different it is. One of my older friends who, I don't know, I can't even remember what age he was, mentioned to me that Eurovision was a thing. He was like, oh, I'm watching Eurovision tonight. Are you watching Eurovision tonight? I was probably about... 14 or 15 and I was like what's Eurovision he was like oh it's just a song contest blah 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 and I didn't watch it and I never thought anything of it until next year when I saw it again and I was like this and I begged my parents to let me stay up and watch it and I was allowed to watch the final in 2015 for the first time ever and that is when Mons won now basic but that is one of the reasons why he is my favorite winner to this day because he's the first winner I ever saw perform live um and I mean that's really the first thing I that's the first taste I got of Eurovision 2015 interesting year um but I mean I loved it and I watched again 2016 and 2017 and then got more and more and more interested as the years went on so question number two Jay asks what is your favorite or what's your first Eurovision you remember 2015 like I said, and did your favourite of one year ever win the whole contest? No. So I'm going to give you a couple of my favourites throughout the years and you'll see that none of them won. So 2015, Love Injected and Warrior from Georgia, not Malta, sorry. Um, Latvia song, I mean, wow, the best thing to come out of Supernova. <laughs> and then 2016, we have Love Wave with Armenia um, and Icebreaker with Norway, which didn't even qualify to the final, which I didn't even realise actually. Um, until I got more into the contest and started, you know, listening to the semi-final songs as well. 2017, City Lights, love it, um, from Belgium. Um, Fly With Me from Armenia is such an underrated song in general, love it. And Running On Air, Austria, Nathan Trent, I mean, it got robbed. It completely robbed. I will find myself still singing that song to this day. Um, and then 2018, Faline, Slovenia, love it. Stones, Switzerland, and Onio Romu, Greece. All of them robbed, even though Kvalene did get through the final. Still robbed. Um, and 2019, everyone should know this at this point. It's Sebi, the song that is at the start of my intro and outro. Um, Sebi, Slovenia, 2019, Zelgash Bear. Absolutely love it. So, um, Eloy asks, what was your favourite Eurovision year? So I will have to say 2019. Um, I was most involved in a contest that happened in 2019 for the first time. And I remember very vividly having an exam after <laughs> the semi-final one, um, Wednesday morning exam, but did I step and watch semi-final one? Of course I did. Um, yeah. Sis asks, what is your favorite Eurovision song ever? Ooh, that's hard. Sebi. I would have to say Sebi is definitely one of them. Um, so is Kvalinne as well. I just I love the vibes that Leah Cirque brought and just love Leah Cirque in general. Um, but after that, I mean, 2020, the contest didn't happen, but obviously John's Tears and Répondez-moi is such an amazing song, which I love so much. Um, so that's one of them, I suppose. 
But yeah, Sebi is probably my favourite song that actually competed live. And they did so well. Okay, so Lutvis asks, I really hope I pronounced your name right, uh, what's your favourite Albanian entry? Without a question, Kveotokas. Who decided to put it second? Because no, it deserved so much better. I loved Junuda Malaki. I loved Kveotokas. It was such an interesting song, such an exciting song. And some of the bits that you don't even notice when you're listening to the song are incredible, like the boom, 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 um, before going into the first chorus gets me every time gets me every time and i didn't even realize it until like a month after the contest so um yeah cleo took us okay um bruno Al- alcantara rodriguez asks who's an artist from your country that you'd like to see competing in eurovision well i have dual nationality so either uk or ireland i'll go for uk i would love to see fleur east in eurovision i just think she would be amazing i, th- I just you know she'd be great um and she was rumoured. Now, I'm so glad James Newman's representing us because I love him too. But if Fleur East went, I think we could get another decent result because Fleur East is not going to settle for a rubber song. Um, also, Luke White. I mean, get him to Eurovision. We need to see Luke White in Eurovision. Um, there we go, Luke White. You have been called out. Um, so, UK, if you're watching, Luke White. Also, I am available. I'm probably actually not available time-wise because I'll have exams, but that's not the point. Um, hi, I'm here. <laughs> I can sing. Um, so Jonathan Fisher asks, who's your favourite Irish and British singer and favourite song from this country's at all the Eurovision? So, ooh, that's a good question. Um, I don't really listen to music from Ireland or the UK at all, like very rarely. Um, I love the occasional song by Dua Lipa, but um, like the very, very, very occasional song. And honestly, I don't, yeah, I, just, I don't, I, my favourite artists at the minute um, are Lakshmi um, from the Netherlands, um, Nielsen, but he hasn't released a song for quite a while, um, Namika, who hasn't released a song since 2018, which I'm really sad about, I want more songs by Namika, um, and Nelly Matula, it's great, um, but who, ooh, who, I need to think about who my favourite songs are from the UK and Ireland in Eurovision, actually. I mean, can I be controversial and say that 22 is one of my favourite songs from Ireland? Uh, (laughs) I actually really did like 22. And obviously, Maps this year. I love. Um, And for the UK, I mean, Never Give Up on You by Lucy Jones was absolutely robbed. It was absolutely robbed. Um, Lucy Jones was great. And I'm just slightly disappointed that it didn't do as well as it should have. Okay, Matthew Richardson asks, what's your favourite song that didn't make the final? I have so many, and actually, if you watch my video, um, where I did the Shane, ESE Shane's 30 Day Eurovision Challenge in 18 minutes, um, you will see a lot of them. We have Zeb's Oni Rumu, Nathan Trent, we have Armenia 2019 walking out. Um, I mean, there's all there's so many songs. Uh, even Ari Olofsson in 2018, who came last, robbed. Robbed. So many songs that I loved didn't make the final. Um, and this year there's going to be a lot more. There's going to be a lot more. But yeah, that's just a it's just a couple of them. Um, so Jacob Scoresby says here at Swedish Entry, without a doubt it is the Mamas. Um, I love them. They're great. Um, I would say I like them more than Lorraine because I just do. Um, yeah, love the Mamas. They're great. Um, Ura Dren says, which country songs do you mostly enjoy listening to from Norway? Um, hi. Uh, and if you're talking Eurovision, some of my favourite Eurovision countries from the last five years really are Armenia. I love Armenia and Eurovision. Um, also Belgium. The like, last couple of years, I have loved Belgium every single year. Um, songs have kind of come out of nowhere. Switzerland, I didn't like and now I do. Um, Greece, I didn't like, and now I do. Um, and I generally like Iceland as well. Um, but then if we're talking outside of Eurovision, the main countries music that I listen to would be German music, um, Finnish music, Swedish music. I mean, any music from Norway, Sweden, Denmark, um, I'll listen to happily, but, um, mainly Swedish, Norwegian, 
I'm weird. I'm really weird. Also, Dutch music. Dutch music is great. Um, people like Nielsen bringing Dutch music. Love it. Okay, Alex the Phenom says, or the Phenom, possibly, says, what interest do you have other than Eurovision? So, this channel, as you know, hopefully, is only one of my channels. I have two. Um, there's this one which is obviously Eurovision based and my other channel is actually education study based and um, I am a student and I am in my last year of school um, but I actually love learning, learning it's just something I love and in case you don't know I'm a chemistry biology and math student so um, those are big interests in my life I suppose apart from Eurovision but if we're talking completely outside of anything school related then also I'm a musician um, which kind of fits in with Eurovision. I play piano, trombone, and I also sing. Um, and then if we go outside that, I suppose, music realm, then languages, which it, it all kind of relates to Eurovision. Eurovision is like an amalgamation of everything I love, um, which is languages and music. So that's the thing. Another thing you may may notice about me is cacti. Um, I love cacti. I have... How many cacti there? About five and then I also have more down there that's on my other side of the room um, and I love cycling as well and mountain climbing. I'm really strange um, but mountain climbing is great. That's like one of my... if, in summer today I'm a good mountain climbing like it, it's just a thing um, but a great, great question I actually love that question because that's the sort of thing that you're not going to see. And then finally Jiju asks um, What's your favourite Eurovision song and artist ever? We kind of covered this. Um, Zala Gashbear, Sebi. Bukion's Tears has come back with two great songs in a row. So he's coming to take that. Your favourite country in Eurovision in general. Also kind of gone over this. Um, Armenia, Belgium really seem to be my favourites. If I was to rank the songs from every year, then I think Armenia might actually come out on top. Yeah. Armenia probably would come out on top. Um, and what do you imagine Eurovision to be like in 10 to 20 years? Now, this is a very interesting closing question. And first of all, I want Kazakhstan. I want Kazakhstan in Eurovision because they bring it in junior Eurovision. They bring quality acts every year. I want to see Turkey return. I want to see countries who have participated before return, like Andorra, come back. Um, Hungary, come back, we miss you. Slovakia, we also miss you. Um, Monaco, why not? Um, America maybe joining Eurovision, that's kind of the thing that we're people are talking about at the minute. I don't know how I feel about that, honestly. I just hope people don't overrate America. We do not want America to become the new Sweden that automatically qualifies every time, that people absolutely love every year when their songs aren't great. Um, but the thing is, the American music industry is so popular anyway that they might do that. I just don't want to see America come in and take over. Um, but I'm hoping that in 10, 20 years, your vision will still be as thriving as it is today. Hopefully a bit less drama, because this year has just been drama left, right and centre. Like every time I open a group chat, someone will be like, did you hear the new latest drama with this? And like, there's drama with who now? Why? Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm still hoping that your vision will be just as great at, uh, in 20, 10, 20 years time. And obviously music will have changed because music changes very quickly. If you listen to music from the first Eurovision, then the next 10 years, next 10 years, every 10 years, I mean, it's not as exact as that. It doesn't just switch, but over time, music changes. So it'd be very interesting to see what the Eurovision song, because there is, I suppose, a generic Eurovision sound. However, it's an amalgamation of all the sounds that are brought together. Um, but it'd be interesting to see what, you know, people think is a very Eurovision song in 10 to 20 years. That'd be so interesting. But that is all the time I have for today. I'm going to edit this down a bit. Um, but thank you all for watching. If you did like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Do all that great stuff. Leave me more questions. And I'll answer them in the comments down below. Um, and if you've got here, comment down below. Sebi, Bazella, and Gashbear because we love them. We love them to bits. But thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Hey, the sun, I'll be this way, the summer sun is